So you know those times when you can't sleep? So you get up at 4.30 in the morning and build something? Um, <laughs> yeah. That's right, gasoline hybrid electric. So yeah, it's definitely happening again. I, uh, I managed to grab my, my old Honda EM600 from a friend's place where it was being stashed. This is a little 600 watts uh, gasoline generator. And uh, still runs and drives fine. <laughs> drives. The gas in it is so old that when you spill it on the ground and try to light it, it doesn't burn, but somehow it still runs. Regardless, um, I'm gonna do an oil change on this, get some new fuel in it. And then we are uh, building Hybrid Chair 2.0, and we're using this Quantum 6000Z. I hung on to the mounting system that I used on the last chair. I had to modify it a little bit, but uh, we'll go over this a little bit more in a little bit more detail later on. But uh, yeah, got the tray on the back here, and uh, this guy over here is gonna sit right on that. Um, yeah, I'm just working out the wiring right now. I even found my old adapter, uh, the power harness adapter. It's one of those things like, I literally have not seen this in seven years, but here it is. I knew right where it was. Um, it was in the clear box that's right up there. I didn't move stuff out of the way and get to it, but this was designed for the Invacare electronics. Actually, at the time, it was Mark V. Yeah, it was one of the Mark V electronics uh, chairs, but this goes to the battery output, this goes to the controller input, and then this is a handy XLR power interface, so we can get power from our uh, our modified charger here into the chair. So what I'm probably gonna have to do, well, what I'm working on right now, I'm gonna have to cut this pigtail off. Um, this connector is not correct. The, also, the way they do the wiring in the Quantum 6000Z, there isn't really a single output that I can access. So what I'm doing right now is I've got another chair frame over here that still has the wiring on it. Here we go. Um, the way they do it, they've got these two connectors here and each battery plugs into that. And then somewhere down in the back or wherever, it goes into a series connection. But what I need to know is which of these pins are in series and which are in parallel because what I was gonna do, the batteries I have in this, these are ones out of that electric vehicle project I was talking about a long time ago. What I was gonna do was connect them directly to the battery since we have multiple terminals, but I need to know how these are series into the chair because if I try and series them the wrong way and the wiring that's in that loom is different, things will catch fire. <laughs> so I don't need to turn this into a giant arc welder. There's, there's already enough things that can go wrong with this. So, um, I'm gonna pull this thing out of here and uh, we're gonna get that sorted out. This is, uh, I can't even film this process. It's, I've had to change things so many times already, but yeah, I'll be back. Oh, so as it turns out, this is super simple. The, uh, the other two wires are your plus and minus and the middle two go down here. I, I love the way the wiring is on this chair, by the way. It's like, They've got nice abrasion protection. Everything's held in place, nothing moves around. But the middle two wires come down here to an automatic circuit breaker. And that is what they're using to parallel plus and minus, or uh, to series plus and minus together. And then our output comes out here. So, sweet. Um, that means I just have to build power taps to come off of these two here. Or more specifically, this one and this one, and we'll be in business. All right, let's take a look at how I attach this thing to the chair. Um, I mean, it's kind of obvious here, we've got some uh, angled unistrut, which I don't really like the way it looks. I was thinking about potentially getting some of that like um, pipe insulation stuff to put around here. Uh, one, to get rid of these sharp edges, but also I think it'll look a little better than having these giant metal things. But I got really, really lucky with this. So on the back of the chair here, we've got uh, some bolts that hold together 
uh, well, basically the side of the chair and this bar that goes across the back. And they have these uh, four hex cap bolts. There is, there's one here, there was one here, and then, can we see it? And then there was another pair of them over here. As it turned out, it was a fairly standard thread size. So the center section of this has the threads and then there's just holes drilled on each side. So you can put these bolts through on either side, no problem. So I just backed one of them out, got this bolt, threaded it in there, used a jam nut, uh, put it through the front of the unistrut here. Oh, no, focus down there. There we go. Um, put it through the front of the unistrut, use another jam nut there, and then that is how we're holding the bottom of this thing on. Now, the issue with this Quantum is we have this thing on the back here that's got the seating controller and also the recline actuator in it. So as you can see, not much clearance here. I, on the other chair, I had this whole thing pushed back up and it was basically between the vertical canes in the back. But obviously you can't do that on this chair. So I had to make a little extension and move our little bracket thing that I built here years ago, move it out from the chair a little ways so that we had enough clearance here. So we basically just got another piece of Unistrut here and it's bolted on. And then that is bolted to the bolt that holds that little frame together. By the way, this is a uh, angle iron from a bed frame. <laughs> this like bed frame is probably the handiest, cheapest, most free metal that you can get for fabricating random things. You can go on Craigslist or whatever site they use nowadays and get this stuff. It's uh, a nice strong steel. It is pretty brittle, but it's also very strong. So that's what I built with that years ago. And then to keep this thing from flopping, because we've got a 45 pound thing on here, um, I just used the other units right here. And I put a nut and a bolt Actually, I just slipped a bolt in here. It's a stainless one, so it's nice and strong. But um, the head of that is in this track, and then we just clamp it there. This runs down, and then this bolt here, because the chair is wider than that little base frame is. And uh, yeah, basically we just attach that there. Same thing, bolts coming in from the inside using a jam nut, clamping it in here, and yeah, there you go. So pretty basic attachment. Um, yeah, again, I'm not super in love with how it looks, but this isn't necessarily uh, something you're going to submit for the beauty pageant or whatever. Um, yeah. Then as far as my power supply down here, which I reused the housing from a charger, it is these little feet on here, but they tend to snap off super easily. So I just use zip ties. So as you're running down the road, this thing kind of jiggles around a little bit, which is fine. Um, but I didn't want these feet to snap off. If I hard mount it to this, if I accidentally bump into something with this or I don't know, any number of things can happen, those feet will just snap off and then that thing's dragging on the ground. So I kind of intentionally made that so it moves around a little bit. There you can see the zip ties just looped around there. And then uh, just a ratchet strap around the whole thing. That's the exhaust right there. This doesn't get hot enough in this area uh, to really cause an issue. So just hook this on here. And the other one is up there somewhere. And cable management. Oh, our uh, our XL, XLR connector is right up here. That goes up front into the battery cover. And I do have a 50 amp circuit breaker uh, in the front of this thing because because I didn't want the batteries connected to small-ish wires. You know, yeah, casualties. Um, yeah, I didn't want the batteries connected without some sort of fusing. So, oh, actually, I think you can see it in the front. Hang on. Oh yeah, see those two silver screws there? You can see the red top of the battery and there's two little silver screws. Um, that's the, uh, that's the circuit breaker. I'm not sure why I felt the need to uh, show that, but yes, there is circuit protection. I don't want things catching fire. Also, why we've got the fire extinguisher here. People always freak out when they get in my vehicles and they're like, why do you have a fire extinguisher? Are you expecting it to catch fire? No, I'm not, but you should always have a fire extinguisher in every car, even if it's brand new. If not to help yourself, but someone else. Because if something catches fire, you just sit there and watch it burn. You can't do anything about it. But if you have a fire extinguisher and you catch it quick enough, you can put it out. Or you can at least quell the flames enough while you're getting out of the vehicle. And in a wheelchair van, that's super important because 
it might take you a few minutes to get out. Even if you can't put the fire out all the way, um, it at least gives you more time. Um, yeah, not that I've, uh, well, I've owned a lot of vehicles over the years that were kind of sketchy. And I had this one 1968 Cadillac. I think that thing caught fire four different times. <laughs> but yeah, quality with a K. Yeah, it's definitely a lot quieter from the front side. All right, here's a cold start. We just put some fresh gasoline in here. Um, the old stuff that was in here, it was crazy. Some spilled on the ground and I tried to light it on fire. It wouldn't even burn, but somehow this thing still ran. So now that we've got good gas in here, um, I'm gonna fire it up, let it warm up, and then uh, get the throttle set. I've got our power supply disconnected. Uh, for this process. Normally it starts on one pole when it's got good gas in it. Whew. I'm gonna let it run for a minute to get the fresh gas flowing through it. It smells bad. Varnished gasoline, Blech. noticed a few things so far. Uh, we're gonna find a spot, to t uh, a place to stop, and then I'll explain how this thing is working. Actually, I think we're gonna start heading back. A uh, few notes. We've added a pretty significant amount of weight to this chair. So, also the battery gauge doesn't work. I'll explain in a few minutes. Something else I've been noticing as well. Um, with all the weight hanging off the back of the seating on this chair, the suspension wasn't designed that way. It was, it was really designed to have all the weight in the middle of the chair spread between the front and rear casters and drive tires. And it's really difficult to drive this thing straight. Um, it goes into these oscillations when, oh, there we go. It goes into these oscillations when you turn slightly or even if I lean. Um, so this is version 2.0. This is arguably a better chair than the previous one I built. But um, yeah, there's some things that need to be addressed. Reminds me of being potentially slippery. Oh, well, they got some wire mesh down. I think we're good. So what have we learned so far? This chair is definitely a lot faster. It's a lot bigger and a lot heavier than the last version I built. And it uses a lot more power. So I think I'm gonna have to modify the power supply I'm using because the amount of power this thing's putting out, I don't think it's gonna keep up with this chair. But uh, let, me, let me explain the battery gauge issue. So the way the electronics on this chair work, it's monitoring how much power the controller is using. So presents a couple issues. If you charge the batteries externally, like not through the joystick, it's not monitoring how much power goes in there. 
So it detects the voltage of the batteries, but then it also monitors the current going in and out. So if you charge the thing externally, the power gauge isn't gonna work properly, or the battery gauge. So it's a little bit hard to tell. So right now we've gone six miles and it says we have 40% battery remaining. Now, most of these quantums, when you get down to 40%, um, that's pretty much dead. They're gonna stop moving if they get under load or anything like that. But typically also, I know with this chair, when I'm at 40%, it starts slowing down and I can feel there's a performance difference. But I'm not getting that. Even though it says 40%, it's still moving around as if it's fully charged. So I think what we're gonna have to do here is use some sort of external battery gauge or external current monitoring to keep track of the charge. Because at some point I'm pretty sure right now with the current power supply I've got hooked up to this generator, um, it will go dead. I don't think it's capable of keeping up because this chair weighs so much more and uses so much more power. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have to do a little more testing. I've got some uh, DC power meters uh, back at the house. So I might see if there's an easy way to install one of those. But then you have the issue of bi-directional power going through the same wire because we've got power going in, some goes to the batteries and some goes directly out to the electronics. So it makes things a little bit tricky. I think the easiest thing might be just to use a voltmeter. Um, that's obviously also not gonna work because the power supply is always putting out voltage so that won't be correct. But in theory, if I stop and shut off the generator, I can look at the surface voltage. Surface voltage isn't necessarily a good indication of battery charge, but yeah, we're gonna have to figure out some way to, uh, some way to keep an eye on how much power is being used here. So where does that leave us with this thing? Um, I, like I said, I, I couldn't sleep, and for some reason, I just decided I wanted to build this thing again. It probably helped that uh, this thing was at a friend's place, and I grabbed it out of his shed last time I was there. So it was sitting around in the garage, and this bracket um, that I used to mount it with, I saved that from the last chair. Uh, it took a little bit of modification to get it on here, but um, yeah, I don't know. Um, it's an interesting thing, interesting concept. Uh, oh, looks like we got a little bit of splashing going on here on that run, dirt on everything. But yeah, having all the extra weight on the back of this definitely isn't doing us any favors. Actually, I think that front tire is coming off the ground. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> I did uh, adjust suspension up as adjust the suspension up as far as I could, but yeah, I don't know. Funny thing. Man, attendant controls are hard to use. I guess uh, that's the other thing too is having all this weight on the rear caster wheels makes them not want to swivel as easily. So maneuvering at low speed is extra difficult. Oh, which way? Left. There we go. All right, there we go. Shut her down. Well, I'm gonna plug it into charge and uh, yeah. So you may be wondering, Dan, is that just a battery charger underneath there? And well, it does um, look like one and it says 12 volt battery charger and it has a standard cable and everything. I basically reused the housing on that. Not much of the circuitry inside of it is the same. I sort of cobbled together an old uh, power supply. What was it out of? I'm trying to remember. I think it was originally designed for some sort of, uh, it wasn't a Hoyer lift. I can't remember. I think it was like a bed or some sort of overhead lift or something like that. But it was capable of putting out a peak of like 20 amps and sustained about mm, 15 amps, something like that, which worked fine on the other chair. But I think this one's just too big and heavy. And uh, yeah, the way the gearing is on these high-speed motors, they tend to use a little bit more power. Actually, come to think of it, I've never hooked an ammeter up to this thing to see how much power it pulls when it's just running straight down the road. That might be an interesting thing to uh, look at doing. But yeah, lots of unknowns. The seating and the suspension doesn't appreciate having all the weight. It's almost impossible to drive it straight. I did adjust the tuning on it, or the programming. It made it a little bit better, but... Um, with the extra weight, the thing goes slower and uses more power. So, I don't know. 
I think other than making something that's just kind of interesting to look at and like, I don't know, kind of a cool concept, um, it doesn't really accomplish any function. Like, I don't see myself hopping in this to go on any long distance trips. Um, that's kind of why I have the bounder over there. So, there you go. It's a thing. <laughs> smells like gasoline out here. <laughs> um, I'm just thinking about this chair. I, I know I say this a lot. Well, I guess I do. Well, it's one of the more sketchy things I've built. Um, I, I, I say that a lot, and uh, I think I've built a lot of sketchy stuff, but it's also kind of fun. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do with that thing. It, it's perfect for swap meets, because like, for example, the Portland International Raceway Automotive Swap Meet, I, well, that was canceled this year, I don't know about, or last year, I don't know about this year, but, um, wait, is it normally, I think it's normally in the springtime. Anyways, something like that is really cool to have there because they allow you to drive golf carts and like other small gasoline powered things around as you're shopping. The Expo Center, however, does not. Um, so it is handy for the Expo Center because when I'm in the outside parking lots, they have, I think, five exhibit halls and all the parking lots. So I can run around outside with the engine running. Uh, then I can just switch it off, run around inside. But the cool thing is that PIR, since they allow you to run around in gas-powered vehicles, people see that and they're like, holy cow, what is it? Um, not that I'm trying to attract attention, but I think it's kind of a cool thing that not many people have done. Although, the uh, the track chairs, uh, I, I forget the brand. Uh, it, it's the ones we used when we were at, uh, when we did the David's chair thing down at Cannon Beach. They have a platform on the back, so you can put a generator on there. And I actually, mm, now that I'm thinking about it, so I've got a C500 over here, and it also goes fairly fast. It doesn't have nearly as much torque as that Quantum 6000Z does. I keep forgetting, I have to switch the microphones on this camera. Okay, so here's the C500, and if you look real close on the back, we've got some screw holes here and over there. So when I got this chair, it actually came with a ventilator tray, and somehow I still have it. Uh, see that red recycle bin? Right there is the ventilator tray. And it is actually the perfect size for that generator to sit inside of. So, um, I'm not doing anything with this C500. It has the high speed uh, 7.5 mile an hour VS motors on it. But that tray is designed to bolt on right here. It sticks out a ways, but it's right on the rear suspension, or right on the rear um, caster arms. And on this chair, this isn't suspension. All it does is sort of tilt back and forth, and uh, not even really that much. So I think it might be better. Maybe we can build a version. I can't. A version 3.0 <laughs> of the generator chair um, with this thing. If I was gonna waste the time, well, waste the time. <laughs> if I was gonna spend the time putting this thing together, I wanted it to be on a chair that's fast. Because I've got other chairs that would fit on here better, and it would tuck up onto the back and yeah, whatever. But, uh, yeah. So after running around with this thing, we might actually do that. It would be very, very easy to install it on that chair. Um, hmm. I was actually kind of thinking anyways. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not really doing anything with that chair. It, it seriously feels like, I mean, I like the old Quantum 6000Zs and everything, but like, I just have this feeling that I can't explain when I'm running around in it. It just feels like it's going to explode into a heap of parts, like Blues Brothers style. I mean, I know it's not going to, but it just, it feels that way. I don't know why. There's just so many moving parts in there. But, um, yeah. Okay, I'm thinking now. All right, well, that's enough for this video. I'm gonna ponder that. That is a mod that would take me literally 15 minutes. So we may revisit this later on. The only thing is those rear caster wheels, uh, since there is no suspension, the generator is gonna be rattling on the ground. It does have some little rubber feet on it, but all of the bouncing with old generators that have carburetors in them 
it can affect gas sloshing around in the tank and also the floats in the carburetor. So I might have to get some little suspension feet or something to screw on the bottom of it. I, I don't know. I think it's one of those things I'll just have to try. But yeah, anyways, there you go. Uh, I'm not sure what to say about it, but uh, it's a chair that uses gasoline or something. <laughs> There's one thing I need to check. I was wondering about this. Hey, it doesn't smell like exhaust. That was a, uh, I can't really smell the exhaust when I was running around, but you know, sometimes when you're in a building where people have smoked in there and then for like a week, your clothes smell like smoke. All right, cool. We're good. Shut up, you. I'll repeat the song. No. Nope.